Hey guys, it's Big John here in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, today, I am actually going to be doing my first poor attempt of learning how to cook steak. Now, steak isn't something I normally cook because it's expensive. Now, last week or the week before, the wife and I went out and we bought some bulk meat at Costco. Uh, top sirloin meat to be exact. This stuff is, is amazing. I have never cooked or actually uh, butchered my own bulk piece of meat before. And this is basically what we got going on here. So, uh, got to hit that button more than once. But we have this, uh, this steak here that I just cut up from a, a big giant piece of meat yesterday. And that, that took some work because it was frozen. I had to thaw it out. Then I had to portion it up and then uh, put some of it in the freezer. And I cooked some last night for my son. And he loved it. He thought it was absolutely amazing. But this is top sirloin steak. Like I said, I've never cooked steak before. And hello, Amber. Thank you for dropping in here. Yeah, we're going to do my best attempt at trying to figure out how to cook steak. And I have never done this before. So I did get out on the internet and I looked around and tried to figure out a whole bunch of stuff to hopefully figure out how I can do this without absolutely wrecking it. Now, the one thing they said to do right off the bat was to salt it and let it rest. Now, this has been sitting on the counter for a little while. Uh, they said to let it rest for at least a good seven, seven to ten minutes. Let it come up to room temperature. And what I'm doing now is I'm hitting it pretty heavy with the uh, Himalayan pink salt. And we're just going to get the seasoning going for right now. And then we'll hopefully fumble through the rest of this process because I, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this before. And I'm going to hit this with some uh, Redmond's uh, garlic, organic garlic salt. I love that stuff. And I do like a lot of garlic. So we're going to give it a little sprinkle of garlic powder on top as well. And we're going to rub that in. And hopefully this is going to turn out really nice. I don't know. I have I have very low expectations with my cooking abilities because I have never cooked, you know, really expensive meat like this before. So this is all going to take a little bit of process to figure out. This stuff looks awesome, by the way. And I lost my towel. My towel is over here. You always have to have a towel handy when you're working with, with raw meat and stuff. But yeah, we're going to get a little bit more garlic powder on there. And I hope these turn out well because I'm in I'm in the mood for some steak today. I normally eat 80-20 burger patties on the carnivore diet. And that's that's about it. I might have some chicken. I might have some uh, chicken wings at times. We're just going to get this ready uh, to go in the pan here. And then I'm going to probably... You know, flip the camera around and actually take a look to see what you guys recommend I should do next because I got my cast iron skillet over here and I tend to use uh, olive oil to get this started. So I'll use olive oil here and I'll get that searing hot. But yeah, so far that's what we got going on there. Uh, let's see, flip you guys around, see what's going on there. We're going to let that rest for just a little bit and see what's going on here. Uh, get the flavor in. Uh, can I have some? I would love to share it with you guys. Need olive oil. I do have olive oil. Thank you. Um, I don't have any lard or tallow, so I'm, I'm at a loss there. Uh, thank, hey, Donna, thank you for dropping in there. Reverse sear after 118 internal. I'm, I'm new to this, guys. I don't know what reverse searing is, and I've probably looked at a thousand videos. Uh, I don't have any whiskey. I'm just going back on through the comments that were made. There was a whole bunch of comments here. And so I actually got a big giant piece of meat. I mean, really big piece of meat from Costco. It was about $48. I cut it up and I made, I think I came out with about 15 steaks in total. And they're all pretty much that size. The ones I cooked last night were almost twice as thick as this. And that was a struggle. I overcooked them. I was very disappointed. My son loved it, but uh, my... You know how kids are, they get freaked out when they see a little bit of red when they cut into their meat. They think it's blood. They don't, they don't understand. But anyways, yeah, that was uh, what I had going on there. We're going to get this skillet fired up at least and get it nice and hot. I just seasoned it. I cleaned it off because we cooked with it last night and let the dog lick it clean. 
Uh, let's see, the oil needs to be part of the rub. Hmm, okay. I've never put oil on uh, for the rub before, but then again, I'm really not that great at cooking steaks either. Don't use oil. I wish I had another option. I have bacon grease, but that's going to create a pretty big mess. Uh, let's see, I cook my meat in bacon grease or butter. I do have butter, but I'm thinking I'm going to get it started off for the initial sear with the olive oil. I'm going to get that heated up real good on this uh, cast iron skillet I got here. And then I'm going to add butter a little bit later on after I get a halfway decent sear going. Is that a good idea? You guys think about that. I cook my meat in bacon grease and butter. Uh, me too, Donna. Now I do have, I always have bacon grease, by the way. You guys should know me by now. I cook a lot of bacon here on this YouTube channel. And I've eaten massive amounts of bacon on the carnivore diet. And I haven't died yet. Imagine that. I haven't had a heart attack. That's that's kind of good news. I'm, I don't want to have a heart attack. But steak topped with butter. Now that's kind of how I did it last night. But I had the temperatures all wrong when I was cooking this last night. I was just trying to experiment with what I had on hand. And that was some, some randomly cut steak. They weren't exactly to an even thickness. So I had one steak a little thicker than the other one. These are, these are from the same steak. I just cut uh, a big portion of it off. So I'll get you guys flipped around again so you can see what I got here. So this steak here was actually connected to there. And I just, I just lopped it off cut it right there to create this one over here because I need to be able to fit it in my cast iron. That is plenty, that is plenty hot. We're going to start off with just a little bit of olive oil. Get that going, get that oil nice and heated up because that's what it said to do on the internet. And like I said, I'm not a cooking genius. Definitely not a cooking channel, but I do have a lot of fun doing these live streams and trying to figure this stuff out. Uh, if you want to see it, do not use oil. I'll sear it oil and pat that thing dry it's probably something i didn't do i didn't pat it dry but yeah that oil's good and hot we're ripping hot right now and i think i will put a little bit of bacon grease in there because i do like cooking with bacon grease although it splatters a whole bunch and makes a kind of a mess but and i got a little bit left here in this jar we're just going to start off with that and there are some little bacon pieces in there and I'm kind of at the bottom of the jar so I'm, I'm left with what I have so I'm pretty happy with that it already smells like bacon okay we're gonna call that good I need to go over here and shut my son's door before I set off the smoke detectors and I'll probably piss off my cats because they like to go in and out so what do you guys think you think this is a good start here we got the pan all piping hot and I can uh, get that tossed in there. Now I do need some tongs. I need to find some tongs. So I got to come over here to the junk drawer and find some tongs. Now for this, we're just going to use the cheap ones because I'm working with really hot cast iron, these cheap metal tongs. We're going to lay that in there and hopefully I got enough room to put both of them in this pan. Oh, there we go. That sounds nice already. It does seem like I have enough room. And I'm doing this with a camera in my hand, which is probably a bad idea. All right, so we got that far. How long do you think I should sear these for? So we're at, uh, let's see on the clock there, it's 112. You know, how many minutes should I let that just sit there like that? before I flip it over and do it again. I love bacon grease. Why shouldn't I use bacon grease? I cook a lot of my food in bacon grease. I use it to cook my burgers. I use it to cook bacon. I use it to cook eggs. Uh, bacon grease works great. Your gray band is going to be thick. Gray band. I don't know what you mean by gray band. Uh, let's see. So sear approximately a minute all right negative two minutes all right we're gonna go for two minutes uh the clock was at 112 we'll wait for that to get to 114 and then we'll uh we'll lift it up and see what we got going on there so this thing is piping hot it's probably super loud 
uh, let's see, me too, lard or butter. Now I am gonna add butter here after I get it uh, pretty well seared in the way I like it. Lift it now, I think it's too soon. I'm gonna wait for that clock over here to hit 114. We're getting pretty close. Either that or you guys can have a good chuckle when I ruin my meat. So now if I were to buy these steaks outright uh, up here in Alaska, that would be, oh my goodness, I'm thinking uh, you know, 15 to $25 per steak. I mean, the prices up here are absolutely insane. Can I have one? I would love to share that. I mean, unfortunately, not many people live around me, so I can't exactly invite people over. Amber, I have a chef with three restaurants. Okay, we are at 114 on the clock. We are going to get this flipped over. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a beginner. Oh, man, look at that. That's perfect. I like that. Two minutes. I like the two-minute idea. I'm not upset with that. All right. We're not looking too bad here. Now, like I said, you know, beginning... You know, for a guy that's never really done this a whole awful lot, because I'm I'm mainly a burger man. I eat, I eat burger meat uh, for 90% of my diet. Yeah, spin that around. So I have a... My stove is, is kind of tipped back a little bit. I need to level it out because all of my oils and stuff tend to run down. And that kind of makes it a pain in the butt. Uh, let's see. Am I a vet? Technically, yes. I am a veteran. Uh, let's see. 30 seconds and flip it. Uh, bacon grease gives you a gray band in your steak, which kills off actual temp uh, that you're looking for. Okay, that's interesting to know. Like I said, I'm going to have to look into this a little bit more. I have a whole bunch of steaks in the freezer right now to cook, so I'm going to have to figure that out. But I love I love the way it tastes when I cook in bacon grease. That's been on there for about a minute now. You know, we're trying to get a decent sear. And I have to kind of move the pan around to adjust the heat with the way this stove is set up. It's, it's pretty bad. Uh, let's see. Aubrey, we're cooking steaks. Uh, this is this is sirloin steak that I cut out of a big giant chunk of Costco steak. And I've never really messed around too much with steak before. So this is an experiment. I don't mind making mistakes on a live stream. Okay, come here, you. I want to see what you look like on the bottom. All right, that's not too bad. I do have a meat thermometer, by the way. That sear's not too bad there either. So, at what point do I just lower the temperature? Or do I just start fumbling around with this? Steak is ready. You guys think that's ready already? Should I hit it with a meat thermometer and see what's going to happen? I got the heat turned all the way down, by the way. Uh, let's see. Clock's flying to you, man. All right. Now you do your sides for 30 seconds, uh, each, your, each of your sides, so I can try that. Like I said, I'm doing this with the camera. I'm going to have to put the camera down. This isn't going to work. So we're going to get you guys flipped around, and I can do this. And unfortunately, I can't see the comments coming in, so I don't know exactly what you're saying until I get the camera back in my hand and try to figure this out. So this is all new to me. Because I can't, I don't normally have steaks. I can't afford steaks. I mean, it's extremely expensive, especially when you live here in Alaska. Now, I've cooked all types of different types of meats and stuff like that. But steaks is something I have rarely been able to afford. And even when I could afford it, I was eating a crap garbage type diet. And I was usually buying, you know, junk food or going out to some restaurant and just, you know, thinking I was more wealthy than what I actually am at that time. But so far I like the texture. It feels, this feels good. I mean, the way it's tender, everything feels right. All right, so here on live YouTube, you guys can actually watch me screw this up. Somehow I can, I can probably figure out how to screw this up. I need a little more heat going on in here. It's not doing what I want it to do on the edges. But I am learning, and this is kind of how you learn. 
Yeah, you guys are extremely helpful, by the way. This is why I like doing these. It's because, you know, when I'm fumbling around the kitchen, just trying to figure out new things and what to do, you know, I can kind of just hit record and hope for the best. And I get a lot of great advice uh, from people here on YouTube as far as trying to figure out, you know, how to cook food or what else I can do on the carnivore diet. You know, how else I can improve my health and overall situation. I mean, it's super helpful. So that's not too bad. Could be seared a little bit more on that side. Now this one here, that is a floppy piece of meat. That is huge. I feel like I want a little bit more of a sear on that one. But I like the texture of it so far. It's looking pretty good. I'm not upset. I get you out of the way. Now I need to clean that off real quick. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna rip that off. And I get it ready. Before the mistakes come out. So I think we're about done, guys, don't you think? So what do you guys think? You think that's pretty close to being done? Uh, try getting a brown crust. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. It doesn't mean that's what I'm gonna get though. Okay, this. This one here feels like it's done as far as I want it to be. I can get an internal temp on that real quick. I do have a handy dandy heat thermometer. I should really invest... Oh, you guys are crooked. I should really invest in a fancier one. You know, one of them little wireless probes. So, we're going get, to get down in there and see what we got. 92. 99, looking pretty good. Now, when I was watching YouTube videos earlier, I saw a lot of them pulling them off at around 120. I think we're pretty close. So when it actually sits over here and rests for a little while, I think we're gonna be good. 118. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. We're at a decent temperature. We're gonna get these yanked off of there and let them sit for a little while. I never did put the butter on. Probably should have put some butter on them. But I can put the butter on now too, and it'll have some yummy flavor to it. I mean, what do you guys think about that? Set you guys over there, behave. And I have, I always have Kerrygold butter handy. So we're gonna take a nice chunk of that. I'm gonna rest that on top. Come on, get on there. Get on there. Don't make me look silly on camera. I look ridiculous. And we're just gonna let this stuff just chill out for a little bit. And then we're gonna cut into it. And hopefully by that time, I will have a little bit more better advice. But so far, yeah, this is what we got going here. We got these two sirloin steaks all cooked up and looking absolutely yummy. Uh, we're cooking sirloin steaks there at the man plan. That's a cool name. I like that. I love how all these people have these different interesting names on YouTube. I mean, we get to pick and choose our own. Get a plate out. I just put away all of my utensils. That's a spoon. And I reorganized my drawer, so now everything is out of place. I need a fork. So, get that over to the table. And I'll also get a nice handy-dandy knife. Now, I don't like using the serrated steak knives and cutting steak. I like having a nice knife because they, they just tend to uh, not tear up the meat as much. Does that, that make sense to any of you guys? I don't like how they tear up the meat. And one thing I learned a long time ago, that anytime you get ready to cook meat, even burger meat, um, it's a good idea just to give your knife a quick run through on the sharpener. And these cheap sharpeners that come in like the Amazon knife blocks, they work really well for these inexpensive knives. They, they sharpen this edge right up really fast. I have no complaints with that. All right, get you put away. Not gonna need you again. 
I always, I don't know about you guys, I like to clean off the little metal shavings just in case. But yeah, when this steak is done, we're going to be ready to go. Boom. Yeah, good stuff here. I better get some water handy too. Did my lens get all gunked up from cooking? Sometimes it gets all gunked up from cooking. Uh, saved by Carnivore 550. Canada is $5 a pound at Costco. I'm not sure what the pound cost on this was. It was a big, giant chunk of meat. It took up my entire sink. And it was cost me about $48 uh, for the entire thing. I got about 15 steaks out of there. So 48 divided by 15. You guys can access your calculator quicker. And uh, I got approx yeah, approximately 15 steaks out of it. So I'm really not too upset about the cost of this steak and everybody kept telling me hey if you're gonna do carnivore go to costco and buy these big huge chunks of meat and then do it that way and uh yeah i i, I think they were right you know so far this has been the most inexpensive way for me to maintain a carnivore type lifestyle is going to costco and getting my meats and stuff through them you know even your burger meats is super cheap even here in alaska it's, it's way cheaper and I'm talking about the Costco Business Center. So that's that's where I use, that's what I use. Before that, I was going to places like Walmart, maybe Fred Meyer, uh, Three Bears. It, it's a ways away from my house, so I don't tend to run out to Three Bears. And I left something in the other room. I have to go grab it first. I hope my dog doesn't eat my steak while I'm gone. I got to worry about my cats, too. They like to eat steak. I got carnivorous cats, and I'm surprised they're not jumping all over me right now whoa yes there's obstacles in my house and a lot of the times the obstacles are animals so i got cats that like to sit on the heater vents my dog just kind of flat tires everywhere so i'll show you the dog here maybe if i can figure the button out but well, that's my flat tire dog uh she's she's a hundred and something years old in dog years but she tends to just lay there like flattened out like that she's she's kind of cool and we're going to release the cats from the bedroom. So hopefully that doesn't turn out to be a bad idea here in just a second. Who knows? Whatever. But we're going to cut into this amazing piece of meat right here. I need to get you guys set up because I like to I like to be able to have the, um, the food that I'm eating in the shot a little bit. Uh, let's see. In Canada. Let's see. Saved by carnivore. In Canada, I am in Alaska. I live in Anchorage, Alaska. Um, we're here in my kitchen. I, I live a humble life. I live in a trailer home, 1975 Redmond trailer. So the home itself is unique all along. You know, <laughs> there's there's so much hodgepodge going on in this home, and it's it's been great. The roof doesn't leak. Uh, we got new skirting put on. We got a new roof put on a couple years ago, and that's been a blessing. Because ever since I moved to Alaska, even in some of the nicer homes that I've lived in, I have never once lived an entire year or a couple of years now in a home here in Alaska that didn't have some sort of leaky roof. It was such a pain in the butt. You know, it was, it was like everywhere I went. Uh, if I lived in a cabin, I had a leaky roof or I had windows that were just blown out. I mean, it, it was a constant problem. And then I had a couple... Uh, I first started living in a camper when I moved up here. I was living in a little tiny uh, 1970s, you know, pull behind camper in my parents' yard. And that's how I got started up here until I got a full-time job. Uh, I first started out running a, a concrete mixer truck and I found out that concrete wasn't meant for me. And also my hands, um, I got all kinds of issues from the concrete in my hands. It, it really, really messed me up. I need to get some salt. I can't eat steak without extra salt. Ta -da. some more Himalayan salt I love this stuff man if you don't if you got this stuff in your area you know definitely go down and get some I got this at the natural pantry here in Anchorage um, it's a it's an uppity store pretty much everything in there is uppity about that store they have carpet in their grocery store I thought that was kind of weird I always wanted to go in there and film it and show everybody but I think they're they're like uh, a little too snobbish about people coming in there and wanting to you know do a vlog in their store or something like that but yeah this this salt is great 
it's got a ceramic grinder instead of the plastic grinder and that's one thing I love about it so we're gonna put a little bit of that salt over here I should get one of those fancy cutting boards like all the other carnivores I have one but hmm, I don't know maybe I don't I, I don't need to be like other people I just need to be like me take a little slice off the edge oh that doesn't look bad it looks like a pretty good piece of meat there oh So next time when I'm going to do this, I'm probably going to cook it up and sear it up in a similar way. Um, but I'm going to add the butter a lot sooner. Well, for then, I'm probably not going to be on, you know, hitting record and trying to figure this out. But that's an amazing piece of meat right there. See what we get off of this corner over here. Okay. And that didn't take long. How long did that take me? Anybody paying attention? I mean... I was only cooking this steak for what, six, seven minutes at, at most. And that's with all the flipping and putting it on the edge and, and doing stuff. And the fat, it had a lot of fat around the edges, a lot of connective tissue running through it, which is great. Not grizzly type stuff, like nice, juicy, tender, melt in your mouth type fat. And that one piece that I just ate could have probably sat up on its edge for maybe another 30 seconds just to soften it up, make it a little bit more tender. But yeah, that's what we got for an inner look there. That's, that's not bad. You guys really helped me out, by the way. I appreciate that. I don't like taking, you know, what could potentially cost me like $25, $30. And if I went to a restaurant, this would cost me this size steak here, you know, it would cost me from $40 to $50 at a restaurant. So yeah, I... I don't like overcooking my steak. I don't like ruining it. But man, that's good stuff there. Okay. Yeah, thank you guys. You're amazing. Uh, humbly growing. It looks delicious. It, it's better than I was expecting. That's for sure. I was not expecting this to turn out the way it did. Um, for any of my regular uh, viewers, or my moderators that happen to be in the room here, I was out about an hour ago. I was filming one of the most dangerous neighborhoods here in Anchorage, Alaska. And I'm thinking about doing more of that, depending on how this one performs. I mean, if people like it, um, by all means, yeah, I'll actually get out more. And I did it with my 360 camera. So I'm kind of experimenting with that, and, you know, seeing how that works uh, set up in the car and stuff like that. But I can actually see. I can flip the uh, image around and see myself, you know, if I happen to just be sitting there and talking like this. So we're going to try that out. But hey, thank you for the comment about the nice hat. Um, so the guy I work for in the summertime, he, he, he buys that stuff for us. It's a company hat. And I drive dump trucks in the summer. So that'll keep me incredibly busy. Hmm. Oh my, wonderful. Oh my goodness. This is so good. I had no idea this was going to turn out this good. This is better than anything I bought in a restaurant. I didn't tenderize it. I didn't do nothing. I just took it. I had it thawing out in the fridge in a Ziploc bag. I took it out. I put it on the cutting board just before I started hitting record. And that, I had it sitting out there for about six or seven minutes while I got this stream set up. And then when I hit record, that's when I put the, uh, you know, the two different types of salt, uh, Himalayan pink salt, uh, Redmond's organic uh, garlic salt. And I put a little bit of extra garlic seasoning on top. And that, that's all I needed. It, it just has, it is bursting with flavor. Mm. And it's so tender. My goodness. What a fantastic day. Now I know why... So many carnivores love eating steak, you know, because it's like a, every bite is like a little magical experience in your mouth. You just don't know if you're going to get that wonderful juicy bit or well, with a little bit of overtone or you're going to bite into that piece that's got a sear in it. And it's just like amazing. And I got the butter on top. Mm. You know, I think a garlic 
type butter would actually be a little bit better. <clears throat> I mean, the butter itself, a nice, good, solid butter, salted or unsalted, I don't think that mattered. Uh, I've heard dipping your steak in raw egg yolk with butter is delicious. Hmm. I haven't tried that. Now, I do like a, a nice um, egg over easy. It's slightly runny. I do like that on my burgers. I always like, you know, getting the meat and the egg yolk and all that mixed in there. It's just amazing. No potatoes, never. I don't use potatoes anymore. Uh, you may as well shovel sugar in you. Yeah, we don't eat potatoes. Um, that's what I did there, Casey, was I did bring it up to room temperature beforehand. Um, I had it sitting out there. It was, it was thoroughly thought out from yesterday, and I wanted to make sure of that because that was one of the main uh, pieces of advice people were giving out online. Uh, Felix Cow, I am, I've been doing pretty good, man. I mean, we're just living the dream up here in Alaska. I wish there was some more work. Uh, since it's the change of season right now, we've been having on and off snowstorms for the last week and a half. We had an ice storm here not too long ago, which created a lot of problems here in the Anchorage downtown and on the Glen Highway. But, you know, other than that, it's been pretty good. I, I did start a new walking routine, and I still need to get out today and do try to get my 6,000 steps in. And I'm going to try to get 6,000 steps in every single day. I couldn't do that 48 weeks ago, by the way. You know, even walking a short trip around here or going to a place like Walmart and walking around, I mean, I could only spend like maybe five or 10 minutes in there and then I would have to like go sit down. Um, if my family was in there for a long extended period of time, I would have to go back to the car and sit down. I was just so, I was so morbidly obese. You know, 435 pounds is nothing to joke about. Now I know some people out there are heavier than that and they were still pretty mobile. I don't know how. I don't know how. I mean, that's impressive all by itself. You know, because uh, one gentleman I talked to on occasion, he was over. There's a grizzly piece in there. I don't like you. Come out. I found the one grizzly piece. So there's a little grizzly vein in here. I'm going to try to negotiate my way around it and turn that into a puppy treat. I'm not sure where it leads to. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll try to cut that little section out. That's a tough section. I didn't know that uh, Zerline had that in there. Okay. Well, I think I'm all right. Now, the center of this is really, really red. And that doesn't bother me. Because, um, you know, if it's still mooing, it tastes good to me. That doesn't bother me at all. Okay. Yeah, that's good. See if I can navigate my way around that. It's just like one little tiny grizzly spot in here. I don't want to throw away the good stuff. I mean, I'm not technically going to be throwing it away. Oh, yeah. It goes little ways in there. We are going to pay the puppy tax with this one. Sadie, flat dog. Come here. Come here. Oh, oh, there you go. She misses it every time. Now, she's one of those dogs... Um, she came from an Alaska village up here in Alaska, up in Nome. And dogs that are uh, considered trash dogs, which are strays, they tend to run around the village and get in the trash, make a big freaking mess. And then the mess attracts other wild animals like polar bears and you name it. And their fate, you know, for dogs like her is typically they just get shot. They put them down. So my wife was nice enough to save her. And she's been a really good dog. You know, she's she's a great bird dog. She's good. She's good in the woods. She's good at hunting. Unfortunately, she's getting old. So that's slowing her down quite a bit. Now up in Nome, they don't really wear seatbelts much. Kids used to ride around in the back of pickup trucks, no problem. Now she was in the back of a pickup truck and she fell out and wound up breaking one of her legs. So she's got a weird weird kind of wing leg and uh, I guess that cost my wife a lot of money to fix that and uh, she, she's lucky to be alive even this long uh, let's see amber let's see yummy I'm gonna have to go buy 
steak now. Yeah, buy it in bulk if you can. I mean, this was this was a great deal. It was it was forty eight dollars for. I mean, we're talking like maybe this big. I can't get back far enough. It was a big chunk of meat, and I got a whole bunch of steaks out of it. I wound up, I thawed it out like almost halfway, and then I started cutting through it. And this is this is kind of what I came up with. And then I had to repackage the leftovers and put them back in the freezer. But um, you know, before it completely unthawed. So hopefully that doesn't create a problem and I don't get food poisoning. But if I do, I know whose fault it is. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not sure what you're talking about, Felix. It needs to be cooked for 10 or 12 hours. No, I don't cook. I don't cook it for 10 or 12 hours unless it's a roast. If I'm making like a roast, yeah, I'll cook that sucker all day. I mean, I'll hit the max time on the on the crock pot and I'll hit put it on low. Um, because putting it putting it on low makes it so juicy and so tender and so much softer when it's all said and done. And a lot of time that roast meat is it's that strandy kind of stuff and it gets really tough but if it sits in there and cooks at a slow temperature it kind of just melts but it just turns into the most perfect consistency for for stew meat wow i wish we were smoking the meat that would be fantastic now when i live further outside of uh, anchorage i lived in a place called wasilla and I bought my mom this uh, this outhouse looking smoker. It was so cool. It looked just like an old outhouse, except for it was a little bit skinnier. It was made out, I believe it was made out of cedar, uh, tongue and groove cedar. It had all these nice little holes at the top for venting, little holes at the bottom. Now on the bottom, what it used for a heat source had a little cast iron bucket that sat at the bottom. And then somebody wired up fans, circulation fans at the bottom and at the top and a uh, little turn knob you could adjust the uh the fan speed and then you could open the little levers once you got the smoke rolling and it had all these nice little wire racks it had uh, like maybe 10 or 15 wire racks in there and you could smoke salmon in there you could smoke meat you could do anything in there it was so much so much freaking yum coming out of that and it smelled great when you opened it uh what do you do with this bear skin i have a stick in the freezer Drawing out now. Yeah, if you put it in the, my refrigerator's a little quirky. So it tends to freeze things even in the refrigerator. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with, it's one of the big giant refrigerators with the bottom freezers. I mean, it's, it doesn't really have a lot of room to breathe in the corner. So it kind of throws off the temperatures a little bit because it doesn't have enough room to breathe. But yeah, you want to get that steak thoroughly thought out you know where it's where it's pliable and then you put it on your cutting board and let it sit out at room temperature from what i told anywhere from you know seven to twelve minutes before you start putting your seasonings on and then somebody else mentioned on here you know i gotta pat it dry i didn't even think of that let's see is this blood on the plate? No, it's some other kind of coagulation. But it looks freaking good. If this thing could crawl away, I would still eat it. <coughs> you know, because we're we're Alaska natives, we like to hunt and fish, and we we like to kill stuff and eat it. It's what we do. Alaska natives are natural carnivores. I found out, and I found that out from talking to Mayaka. And uh, you know, she was asking me what I was doing, how I lost all the weight. Because I lost a tremendous amount of weight. And she's like, what are you doing? How are you maintaining your weight loss? And, you know, because she, her, like anybody else, you know, they're used to somebody losing a lot of weight. And then all of a sudden, we, you know, we gain it right back. It's almost magical. But we never changed anything about our diet. You know, we just changed something for a period of time. And then we went right back to where we were. So... I worked on changing my mindset around food, understanding that meats and fats aren't going to kill me, um, eating a lot of eggs, eating a lot of bacon, having a higher cholesterol, higher LDL, 
it's not a big deal as long as I'm not adding in all the extra crap. So if I eat a bunch of overly processed foods and seed oils, absolutely it's going to be a problem. But since I don't like that stuff anymore, I avoid stuff like that. I don't have those underlying health issues that the majority of the population has these days. I think it's some crazy number, like 90% of the population eats just garbage, like absolute garbage. So anybody that's eating a healthy diet, I mean, you're a very small percentage. Too much salt. No way, ma'am. I found out that, uh, you know, since I started the carnivore diet, I have actually upped my salt intake. Not only that, salt is incredibly important, like healthy type salts, you know, like Himalayan pink salt, Celtic sea salt, uh, Redmond's real salt, you know, salts with really good minerals. Is important. You have to have this stuff. If you take out the salt, you die. You don't have electrolytes in your system. You will die a miserable, horrible death. And a lot of people feel miserable every single day because they don't have enough electrolytes. That was me before. I fixed my electrolyte issues. I make my own electrolyte drinks at home. And I fixed all those problems. And now I have an insane amount of salt. But it's also the type of salt. Where are you getting your salt? You know, the type of salt they use at, like, say, McDonald's and their French fries, the high sodium content and all of these overly processed foods, they're using the most cheap overly processed salt that they can possibly buy because they don't want to spend money on foods that they're selling you. They're just trying to make money off of you and hoping that you don't pay enough attention and you just eat it because it just tastes good. And that, that's just how that all comes up. Uh, you took the nutrition blue pill. I did. I did that about 48 weeks ago is where I started. It took me a while to actually understand it, though, um, because when you first start losing weight, you still have a lot of uh, predeterminations. You know, like, you know, I'm almost a 50 year old man, so I'm very stubborn in my ways. It took me a long time to wrap everything up here around a healthier lifestyle and try to figure out a few things um, as far as, you know, the importance of fasting. You know, fasting is incredibly important. Now, that's something we used to teach. We used to practice. Um, you know, we everybody I knew used to fast for a period of time, especially around the holidays. Now, that's just a religious type fasting. And it's also something that we used to do either before Thanksgiving. Um, then we would eat whatever we wanted on Thanksgiving. And then some people would fast for two or three days after Thanksgiving to let the body just take a break. You know, there, there's plenty of nutrition in there from whatever you wrecked it with on Thanksgiving. But we usually eat Thanksgiving, and what do we do the next day? You know, I'm just talking about people right now. We go to Thanksgiving, we come home with a ton of leftovers, and then we wind up eating those leftovers. So we're having, like, Thanksgiving for two or three days. And then we're just, we keep piling it on, piling it on, and that just stacks in here. And we're just, like, really uncomfortable and swollen after that. I do. I have a couple cats. I wish they would show up but it's uh the sun's out right now and we haven't had a whole lot of sunshine here in alaska lately so they like to find the warmest room that's my son's room right there and it's kind of like the windows in there make it like a greenhouse so it gets warm um, or they're hanging out in the back there just sleeping away holy moly yeah this is a great idea whoever recommended going to costco and buying a, a big giant chunk of meat was a genius I mean, I, I debated on it because I didn't want to get a huge piece of meat and ruin it. I was, I was actually intimidated by this when it was, you know, sitting in my sink, just thawing out. I had it, uh, I had it sitting in a big bowl, like a big giant salad bowl, and I um, just let the water, the cold water, just trickle across it so it would start the initial thaw. That way, I could actually section it up and put it away. But that was a good way to get it started from frozen in order to process it a little bit better. Because when I first got the uh, big slab of meat home, I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know how to cut it up. I didn't know where to start. I didn't want to ruin it. Um, I'm, I'm thankful that I figured it out because this is, this is great. I mean, anybody could figure this out. Just go buy a $50 slab of sirloin and I just cut it up in like one inch slices. And uh, some of those steaks I had to cut in half. So it was, it's just, yeah, it's a great idea. This is awesome. I like pretty much all meats. Now the problem with that is not all the meats um, tend to work with my weight loss if I'm trying to lose weight. Now, so far overall, I'll, I'll tell you this much about the carnivore diet is the carnivore diet has improved every aspect of my life. 
Um, it does provide some weight loss, but it is tremendously helpful for people like me because I have I'm a glutton. I eat a lot of food. Um, whenever I see food, I just want to eat it and I want to eat more of it. And it doesn't matter if it's healthy food or unhealthy food. I just want to eat it all. So the carnivore diet helps curb that. So when I'm full, I actually feel full. I can recognize the hunger signals. And also when I do overeat on the carnivore diet, I'm usually not packing on the pounds like I would if I was eating overly processed foods or, you know, just running out and even trying to be somewhat healthy and, and eating the traditional diet at a restaurant that's on the healthier side of things. So this allows me to maintain whatever weight loss I've had and, and weight goes up and down. Like recently I've been dealing with uh, 15 to 20 pounds, you know, kind of this, this continuous buffer zone and it's, it feels like a forever plateau, but I've been warned and not necessarily warned, but I've been advised that, Hey, that's perfectly normal and uh, everything will change. We're, we're naturally going through a cycle right now inside and out. Uh, just like the seasons we're, we're having right now, we're going from uh, winter time to springtime in the summer. Once summer kicks in, I'm pretty sure my metabolism is going to be on fire. I'm going to drop another anywhere from another 40 to 50 pounds and uh, be able to keep it off with the carnivore diet just because of the way just because of the way everything works. And uh, Upping my fat intake really works. I mean, it helps a lot. So if I eat uh, additional fats. If I add additional fats like butter, bacon grease, I haven't gotten any lard or tallow yet, but I plan on doing that. I do plan on going out to the butcher at some point and buying uh, the trimmings, the fat trimmings, and then making my own uh, tallow at home. I hear that's a winning situation because I can. So once it's all done and separated from the water, you can store it in mason jars, and it can store up to up to a year or more. So. If I can get 15 pounds of tallow, I'm not sure how much that's going to produce. Uh, not tallow. If I get 15 pounds of uh, uh, fat trimmings and create that into tallow, I can get a better understanding as to how much that'll produce and how long it'll take me to go through that. Well, thanks, Amber. Be sure to hit the like button if you could. It's those three dots up there in the corner. I don't know if it's on that side or that side. But, yeah, that's, that is extremely helpful. Um I don't know if any are you are interested. I will be uploading a uh, in the next day or so a video of the most dangerous neighborhood here in Anchorage. Um, it's something I did want to do, uh, even for the regular carnivore viewers. I wanted to just show you guys, you know, all kinds of different neighborhoods we have here around the Anchorage area. Because I mean, this is one of the most interesting cities I've ever lived in. I've lived in a lot of places. I grew up on the East Coast, uh, Concord. Concord, New Hampshire was one of those. I lived in Manchester, New Hampshire. I spent some time in Boston and New York City, uh, Chicago, St. Louis. I didn't live in uh, any of the California cities, but I visited many of those. But this city here, I mean, it's just different than anywhere else I've ever been. It's got kind of a Midwest feel. But since all the uh, people from California got sick and tired of that place and they started moving up here, um, it's, it's starting to have more of a California type vibe to it because they, they bring their politics, they bring their bike paths, they bring all their, you know, misconceptions from down there that they didn't like and they, they bring it with them. And it's just unfortunate. They're kind of ruining the whole Alaska vibe. That's another thing I like about the carnivore diet right there. She mentioned, um, a lot of people on the carnivore diet, they're they're coming off their their medications. They're coming off it naturally. Now, I I don't like prescription meds. I've taken a few, you know, under the advice of my doctors, and and usually it creates an adverse effect in me pretty quickly. I'm very sensitive to a lot of things, you know, even seed oils. If I should get into some seed oils, I'll have inflammation in my feet, like almost automatic. I can feel it in my toes within four or five hours after accidentally consuming some. And it happens. It happened when I was out eating at a restaurant one day and it was very annoying because I, all of a sudden my feet were swollen and I was like, I don't know why. And then I was thinking about, it's like, I've eaten that food before, but then I realized I ate that same food, but it was at a different restaurant where I had the reaction. So yeah. And then there's other people they're finding out with the carnivore diet because it's an elimination type diet. They're finding out they have histamine issues to certain, certain foods. Sometimes <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. 
But sometimes those histamine issues are from uh, aged meats. I mean, I didn't know that. I, I started looking into that. I was like, wow, you could actually have a histamine response from certain aged meats and stuff like that. Um, some people have a histamine response to eggs. The type of protein that's in an egg is uh, different. So a chicken egg is going to have a different protein than, say, a duck or quail or a uh, turkey egg. So a lot of people that have egg allergies, they can eat duck eggs, quail eggs, and turkey eggs. <coughs> I mean, all this stuff is just stuff you just randomly grab onto as you get further along. Oh, man. So salty, so delicious. Juicy. <coughs> Melts in my mouth. This guy head looked like an egg. Yeah, absolutely it does. Thank you there. I appreciate that. But yeah, as you get older, eventually your hair falls out. Now, the nice part about old age is you don't have to always cut your hair as often. Now, I don't mind the, the gray beard, <clears throat> but I had to actually cut my beard a little different. Because if I let this part of my beard grow out, I get these weird, you know, I don't know how you... I figure it, but this weird little hairs on both sides. And even at this length, if I had hair on the sides, it, you know, it'd be doing this crap here. Look absolutely ridiculous. Mm. But you can see my metabolism's been working. I actually have somewhat of a shiny head. That's good. I mean, that's exactly what you want. You know, when you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to get, get healthier. You know, the sun's starting to come out. Oh, he, he could have stayed there. That would have been all right. But I do take all that as, as good fun and humor. <clears throat> but, yeah, let's see. Thanks, Felix. What did Felix say? That's amazing, Donna. Besides carnivore diet, do you exercise? I just recently started walking more. So and before I tried to exercise, I was trying to lift weights. Um, now, the viewers were getting very upset with me because I like to lift heavy, heavy weights. So I was told to lighten up. I have been testing out my weights at 50% of what I used to lift and just increasing the repetitions and trying to get the same, you know, level of struggle uh, with the weights. And just last week I started walking and I walk, start walking for extreme distances compared to what I'm used to. So like the first day I started and I was just trying to see how my feet would feel because before anytime I walked, it hurt, it hurt all the time. And I'd come home and I'd have to sit down or lay down and I'd usually wind up being more injured uh, than feeling like I was in better health. So I didn't walk a whole lot. I didn't exercise a whole lot. And, and it's hard to, you know, tell a fat man, you know, somebody that's 400 pounds plus, you know, hey, you just need to exercise more and just leave it at that. Or you just need to eat right. Well, okay, tell me what I need to eat. You know, because that's what's rolling through a fat man's mind. I mean, it's just like a... You know, when you're, when you're morbidly obese like that, you're almost like a toddler. You need to uh, have some pretty thorough explanations. You need to be talked to in specific ways uh, because we're very sensitive. We're hormonal. Uh, everything's off. Everything's out of whack. Our testosterone is gone. I mean, it took me a while uh, to get my testosterone levels back to where I actually had a sex drive again. That, that took a long time, but that came back pretty quickly with uh, the introduction of a of an egg fast. That's where I noticed a boost in testosterone almost immediately. And, uh, it was, it was welcome. I was like, wow, that's great. But yeah, things, things just go by the wayside. Uh, let's see, what do we got going on in here? I love these comments. Meat is known to cause high cholesterol. Okay. But is cholesterol bad for you? Or are, were you just told that cholesterol is bad for you? I mean, there's the question of the day. That's what a lot of carnivores, <clears throat> a lot of carnivores discuss. You know, because just because the cholesterol is there, just because the LDL increases, and why does it increase? Is that a natural phenomenon? Is that something that our bodies are supposed to do naturally? Is that something we're supposed to try to avoid? Is that something people used to try to avoid, you know, back in the 1800s before they knew anything about cholesterol? Or is that something more recent that we just need to worry about it because we've been taught that for the last 30 or 40 years of our life. And, but yeah, that was a concern of mine when I started eating a lot of meat. I mean, everybody that starts carnivore kind of has these 
misconceptions. Can I actually sustain that? Is all these claims true? You know, do you gain mental clarity? Are you able to, you know, see better, hear better? You know, a lot of my hearing came back too, by the way, with the carnivore diet. I had to wear hearing aids. I couldn't hear anything. The TV, I listened to my TV uh, just to, you know, for instance, I, now I listen to my TV on a volume of 20. And before the carnivore diet, that TV was turned up to 35 or 40 just for me to hear anything. So yeah, some improvements happen. Inflammation, swelling, all my back pain is gone. I don't have pain in my feet, my joints, my hands anymore. Everything all disappears. And once all of that starts figuring itself out, and it does, it takes some time. Your body takes some time to readjust because, you know, for me, I was 400, over 400 pounds. Everything needed to readjust and reinsert itself into the proper place and alignment of where it was supposed to be in the first place. Uh, dairy, I have, now the issue I have with dairy, and the only issue I have with dairy is that it slows down weight loss. I mean, it almost like puts the brakes on. You're pumping the brakes. So if you get into the, if I get into the cheese, I can't say you because everybody's different. Some people work great with, uh, you know, heavy cream, butter. But we need to make sure that it's like, the healthiest type that we can get. Now, if I eat a lot of butter, my weight loss kind of seems like it stalls out, but my digestive system improves when I eat a lot of butter. Hmm. Man, this is a great idea. Whoever thought of me cooking up steak today, I want to thank you. And I don't know who that was. Dr. Sean Baker, Dr. Kim Berry have done videos on YouTube about cholesterol. There's tons of information about cholesterol. Tons of information, especially, and it's helpful type stuff. It's stuff to actually open your eyes to because, you know, just because your doctor for many years told you that high cholesterol is bad, you need to get on statins. But people with the carnivore diet are raising their cholesterol and their blood pressure is normal. My blood pressure is perfect now. And for the first time in my life, my blood pressure is perfect now. And that happened pretty quickly, about 30 to 40 days into the carnivore diet is where my blood pressure went from like up here to, oh, and then my doctor looked at me like, that's crazy, huh? Okay. And we've done several checkups and several follow-ups after that. I've done a lot of blood work, um, even my blood panels, as far as my cholesterol is concerned, it's not that high. It's not even that high to worry about. Now, since I eat a lot of red meats, my uh, B12 is through the roof, by the way. It's, it's so great. I don't have to take a B12 supplement anymore. And that's something I had to take uh, beforehand because my B12 was low because I was eating a bunch of crap garbage food. And yeah, when you just eat a bunch of garbage food, you know, even if you're eating red meats uh, that are, you know, provided like at a fast food restaurant or something like that, the meat. A lot of the nutrition is cooked out of that meat, you know, because they have health standards and stuff like that. So they overcook it. A lot of the good value, any of the vitamins and nutrients are cooked right out of it. Mm. Yeah, we don't like statins. Statins are a bad thing. We never had statins in the 1800s. Hmm. Uh, won't prevent heart disease. Um, statin free plan. Nationalized bestseller. But here's the thing: it's like even the even the vegan population they, they're not even into a meat based diet. You know they they have a really good understanding as how much nonsense was told to us too. So you know some people don't digest meats as well. So they tend to move towards vegetables. I don't digest vegetables well. I'm one of those odd ducklings that if you give me a lot of vegetables, I have a whole bunch of issues. And I found out that a lot of the vegetables were causing a whole bunch of issues. Even my eyesight issues, a lot of that had to do with vegetables, uh, the sugars, uh, all the extra added carbs, all the nonsense, um, too much fiber. You give me fiber. And I was actually prescribed to take more fiber in my diet at one point. And it made me dangerously constipated. It was horrible. I mean, I was almost, I almost had to go to the hospital to get that figured out. I did not like that. That's something that, that was some, uh, 
some traumatic issues going on there. I got PTSD from that moment. I have POT syndrome and can't take anything that can boost energy. Hmm. I don't know how POT syndrome works. I don't even know what that is. I'll have to look into this after this live stream, what, what POT syndrome is. Can't take anything to boost energy. Well, healthy nutrition all by itself boosts energy, so I'm not sure if you're meaning stuff like caffeine, um, you know, because even vinegar uh, will boost your energy. There's a lot of stuff. Sugar, especially sugar and carbs, will boost your energy for a period of time. It'll boost your energy so much, you'll hit the ceiling and then you'll fall flat on your face. So that's that's scary. You know, thinking, I'm not sure what... I might be reading that wrong there. Because if I go from dehydrated to hydrated, that, that boosts my energy too. So I'm just I'm just curious. I'm not you're I'm not debating how valid that is, but that'd be interesting for me to learn more about POTS syndrome. I'm, I'm gonna take a look at that later. I need to write that down. It's where your heart rate can get above 200 BPM just standing up. That's scary. Hmm. I don't know how that works or how that. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, that's a that's a tough one. I wouldn't like that. Now, before I started, you know, managing my own food intake and learning that ingredients matter, I had an issue with something similar to that. I mean, my blood pressure would go through the roof taking two steps, uh, just getting into my truck, and I'd have to sit there for a little while and just calm down until everything. I wasn't flush anymore. I don't know if that's similar, but uh, anything from B12, caffeine, energy drinks, etc. Hmm. Yeah, like I said, I don't know much about it. I can't give any advice on it for sure because I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I'm also not a doctor, so I don't know. Oh man, really good, yummy, fatty piece there. This is taking me forever to eat this. Well, this is a whole lot more fun way of making a steak and eating a steak and having a decent conversation. This is kind of like I'm out to dinner, you know, with good friends. That's why I like these uh, these vertical live streams there. Plus, I, plus I learned a lot from you guys. And, uh, you know, I get great ideas of stuff that I can actually learn or look into, like pot syndrome, for instance. Now, I have looked into uh, stuff like Hashimoto's. Um, thyroid issues. You know, because I didn't know. I didn't know anything about them. I didn't know if I might have uh, some of those issues. Now, after I did my uh, last blood work, I found out I don't have any issues at all with my thyroid. So I was thankful for that. And I also learned a lot about that in that, that visit. You know, like, it's like less than 1% of the population actually has a serious thyroid issue. Most people just are told they have a thyroid issue and just believe it. But they don't uh, because some of these doctors aren't exactly the best doctors. They're not out there looking out for you. So trying to find a really good doctor that you can trust is pretty hard. Thankfully, I have one. And I I don't want to ever see him go. I mean, I appreciate him because he, he really cares. He really cares about me. He's very interested in my diet, my nutrition, uh, the way I'm doing things, how my sleep apnea has just magically vanished. I mean, it's just, it's it's huge. Um, it's a sirloin steak that I made from a uh, big giant piece of Costco meat. Got another one sitting over my shoulder. I don't see any cats around it yet, so I'm pretty good there. I'll probably save that piece for when the family gets home. I don't think I can eat that. That one was huge. I don't, it wouldn't even fit on this plate it's so big. But it looks really, really tender. Mm, it's hard not to cut into it and start getting into that one too. I don't drink beer anymore. I, you know, many years ago I used to be an alcoholic, and I, and it was, uh, I wasn't an alcoholic to the point where it was affecting my job, my my relationships. I wasn't abusive or anything like that, but it was to the point where I recognized that wow, I was drinking way too much. I mean, it all starts with a with a couple beers and it turns into a six pack then you're then you're into a 12 pack 
and then you were drinking a case of beer, you know, 24 beers, and then all of a sudden a 30 pack came out, and I was drinking a couple 30 packs a day, and this was early on in my in my life, and I was like, holy cow. Hmm. I said, I just finished a 30 pack. Now I want to go to the store and get another one. Uh, I got to fix that, so I fixed it. Um, I just don't drink anymore. I don't like it. It brings a lot of excess drama. It's not, it's not fun. Yeah, that's one thing that I did when I first got up here. So I moved up here in 2004 from Joplin, Missouri. Uh, that's where I was for, I was in Joplin, Missouri for seven, eight years. And I was trucking out of the Midwest. And uh, so I moved up here. And that was, I was still pretty young then. I was in my 30s. And I was partying a lot. I was partying a lot. One of my uh, brothers was uh, into the party crowd. So I got involved in that. I was doing bouncing at some of the bars. That was a good time. I drove some taxis up here. I had a whole lot of fun adventures up here while I was here, but I, there was a lot of alcohol. There was a lot of, a lot of boozing going on. And our and our bars up here are open a lot later. Like out in Wasilla, those bars are open till 5 a.m. So you might actually go into the bar when the sun's going down and then sometimes in the summer the sun doesn't really go down so when you come out you know the sun's still up so you, you spent your entire night at the bar and you come out and the sun's like in your face blinding you it's absolutely crazy sk remember me mm -hmm. there's so many people with sk now boozing used to be fun and it was a period of time I enjoyed it quite a bit. I look forward to it. But, yeah, you know, I'm almost 50 years old now. I think if I had a couple beers right now, I'd be under the table, you know, looking up at the top, seeing the where the kids put their chewing gum. But, yeah, definitely not my cup of tea anymore. Uh, do you eat pork? I just pulled some uh, short ribs out of the oven. I do eat pork. Uh, pork does slow my weight loss down, so I try to avoid pork. Uh, chicken tends to slow me down a little bit, but I mean, I'm not against it. I like bacon. Uh, bacon, for some reason, doesn't affect my weight loss. I can actually lose weight while eating bacon. But like if I have uh, if I have ribs or something like that or chicken wings, my weight loss just, nope, you're not losing any weight. You're going to maintain, but you're not gaining it, but you're going to, yeah, it's definitely going to be a slowdown there. I don't really miss having a cold one. Um, for starters, there's a lot of sugar in them. And I just don't care much for sugar. It's too sweet now. If I were to have a beer now, uh, since I've had, you know, my palate's completely free of sugars and free of carbs, it would be like that first sip of beer that I ever had when I was a younger, youngster. Or that first soda pop that I ever drank that was way too sweet. Around the time when they started... You know, taking away the sugar, and they started putting in high fructose corn poison. Hmm. Well, Erlota, I do understand that some people don't eat meat. Some people don't eat meat because they don't like it. Other people don't eat meat because it's a uh, a moral issue for them. And I totally get that. So if, if that's how somebody feels, I respect that. You know, I'm not going to sit there and poke fun at people just for eating vegetables. But I will get annoyed with people that say you have to eat vegetables and, like, how dare you for, you know, eating a piece of meat. I mean, I'm not going to turn it around and go the other direction. It's just, just, it's not helpful. I'm glad I don't feel that way, Loda, because I wouldn't be totally screwed as a type 2 diabetic. Uh, let's see, putty cat, do you get depressed during the winter months? Um, cabin fever is a real thing. Now, when you first move up here, it's not really that big of a deal, but it really all depends on your activity and employment level. So, uh, depression in the winter months is a problem. Now, here's the funny thing about Alaska is we have a lot of salmon. Now, salmon have all the vitamins that a person needs. 
uh, to make it through the winter months without depression. So if I should ever get a case of cabin fever or I feel like I've been cooked, cooped up for too long, just make some salmon, eat that, and that kind of fixes it. So that's a, that's a natural solution because it's just about everywhere you live in the entire world has its own little solution for how you can actually maintain life while living there. You know, even the desert, for instance, it's got its own unique uh, situations and values to it. Uh, you drink coffee. In the morning, I will have a couple cups of coffee. Now, I will be trying a fast this week. and I'll probably be doing that fast with uh, Todd at Carnivore Cure. Um, we're going to be starting like an 80, another 86 to a 90 hour fast. And I think I had mine set up for like 90, 91 hours, but I didn't get it done like I wanted to because I got sick right in the middle of it. So it was like a day after I started it, I got sick. So I, when you get sick, you don't want to continue fasting unless it's that particular type of illness um, that, that fasting helps. But this type of situation, I didn't want to screw up my metabolism uh, any worse than it could have already been. So I abandoned on the fast. I came out of the fast with some uh, chicken broth, and that was extremely helpful. Uh, what's the best way to get rid of a toothache? Um, well, it depends on how bad it is. Now, there's a product I use. It's called Coco Powder. Not cocoa. Coco. It's a different process. Fermentation and stuff. There's no sugar. And some people have said, oh, that's too abrasive. Well, I use that along with the carnivore diet. I haven't needed to go to the dentist. I've had, you know, toothaches and stuff like that that have actually fixed themselves. So I use, I use brush with cocoa powder. And it doesn't taste bad. It also helps for depression. There's all kinds of uh, medicinal values with cocoa powder that most people don't even know about. I didn't know about it either until I started looking into it. Um, and it was just one of those things because I was looking into like people that were brushing with turmeric and, you know, all kinds of other stuff. <coughs> but so I started brushing with, I've been brushing with cocoa powder for over a year now. I haven't had to go to the dentist not once. I mean, it's been great. Let's see, where do you get it from? I purchased mine off of Amazon. Uh, you can find cocoa powder. Now, cocoa powder, I don't know if it does. It, it's So, cocoa powder is, is fermented in a different way. Um, it's not processed like cocoa is. So, it's two totally different things. Although, you can make a hot chocolate out of cocoa powder as well. It's a little bit more expensive, but you can get a bag and it goes a long way. It goes it goes a real long way, so you don't need to get a whole lot of it. Hey, Wisconsin, there are Clyde from. Appreciate you dropping in there. Hmm. I think I got the bag of it over here somewhere. Unless somebody moved around on me. Hmm. There it is. Okay. I just bought this on Amazon. Cocoa powder. That's literally all it is. There's nothing in it. USDA organic, whatever that means. Oh, for you vegans out there, it's vegan friend, <laughs> vegan friendly. Wow. Hey, did you guys know that Skechers is vegan shoes? That cracked me up when I walked in there and they got sneakers that say vegan, but but I understood it. It took me a while to understand it, but I understood it after a little while of thinking, but. You know, as a carnivore, when you're walking into a store and you're trying to buy sneakers and you see this vegan in your face and you're like, why is, what, who's eating the shoes? That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Who the hell's eating the shoes? But then I realized, oh, it's just, it's not animal products being used. You know, there's a lot of shoes are leather, you know, but it's okay to, you know, make your shoes out of oil-based products. I mean, you can't win with that scenario. That <laughs> just cracked me up. Vegan shoes. Uh, crazy. I think the rest of this is going to go to the puppy. Mm -hmm. Now we had enough steak. I'm full. I'm officially full. Fat man is full. Weird. And that steak wasn't very big. Now I'm going to be good to go. I do have a video processing in there. I'm trying to get to. I got to get it edited and out. You know, hopefully, maybe by tomorrow. I did. I screwed up yesterday. I uh, I posted a video while doing a live stream, and that really screws up uh, the algorithm. I I think it does because 
maybe it's just a crappy video too. I was sick when I filmed it. So it just might not be performing like any of my other ones, but that that's how it is. Vegan shoes are tasty. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, John, just an FYI, Kako and Coco maintain high levels of caffeine. Yeah, okay. And oxalate acid, uh, which should not be consumed in large amounts. I definitely don't consume it in large amounts. Um, literally, all I do is I put some toothpaste on my brush and I just taste it. That, taste it. I just, you know, take my, uh, my toothpaste, flip it over, you know, that's on the brush and just tap it and get a little bit of that in there. Well, I'll just brush my teeth with it and rinse it out. I'm not using it for anything else other than that, but it it just works. I mean, it's one of those things. Uh, when you go grocery, uh, do you buy in big bulk of meat? Yes, I do now, Felix. That's something that took a little bit of getting used to. Um, so when I first started the carnivore diet, I still wasn't, apparently I wasn't like mentally all in on it. Like, oh, I just need to go. <laughs> buy bulk meat <clears throat> i was experimenting with a lot of inexpensive meats uh stuff i could buy at walmart and stuff like that i was uh we were buying frozen burger patties that's how i got started was it uh, frozen burger patties and uh organic grass-fed frozen burger patties from costco worked great now i did do a couple of weeks with uh just the cheapest you know 70 30 burger patties i could find at walmart um i did okay I did not like the way they made me feel after consuming those for like nonstop for a week. So I kind of uh, swayed away from the Walmart type meats. And I've always had problems with Walmart meats. I said, you like getting your head licked? Wow, that's an interesting one. No, not necessarily. Uh, please be respectful. Let's see, Peter G. Hey there, Peter. Nice of you to drop in. Uh, have you found a source uh, for your fat or tallow? No, I have not. I have not really ventured much out. Uh, did get out to uh, an Anchorage neighborhood. I got some filming done today. I didn't do anything else. It's Sunday around here, so a lot of these uh, these butchers and stuff like that they're not they're not necessarily available today. So maybe tomorrow I might get out on Monday and and give that a shot. See if I can get. So see how much should I get for a crock pot? About five pounds. What do you think, Peter? About five pounds of fat. Yeah, I can like put, I got a pretty good size crock pot. It's not one of them little tiny ones. Uh, you don't like my question. I'm trying to think of what your question is, putty cat. You got to remember that these comments come up in a little tiny section of the screen that's about this big. And then once they come through, they, they disappear, they go up. So I got to go back and look. Let's see if I can find how much is a gallon of milk. Now, lately, milk has been on sale in many places. I'm not sure what is going on with the milk um, because we've been able to uh, go to like places like Fred Meyers and they got, uh, sometimes it's like 2%, sometimes it's whole milk uh, that we purchase for the kids mainly. And sometimes we're getting it for like a dollar a gallon. But I've seen milk prices just, just around the area at times, you know, get up as high as $5 to $7 a gallon. I mean, it really depends on where you're shopping for milk, uh, what store you're going to. Uh, the Costco prices are always going to be different. So, yeah, it's, it's okay, about five pounds of that uh, fat trimmings. And then, uh, okay, Peter, you've had experience with this uh, making your own tallow. So let's say about five pounds of, of um, fat trimmings. Approximately how much tallow is that going to make? Like we're talking like just mason jar size. You know, just like mason jar. See about how much that might create. Because I haven't really messed with it. It's something I'm interested in. I would like to have another option for fat available to me, you know, besides butter and baking grease. Because <coughs> I do go through a lot of baking grease. I have this burning question. Is that an Ulu on the drawer cabinet? Okay. I do have... You're talking about right there i'm pretty sure you're talking about right there that is not in ulu that was a present uh from one of our ayas and aya is just word for aunt and for those of you who don't notice don't know um maybe my buttons will work for me there we go uh but this is actually uh like a pot holder she made and it is in the shape of an ulu uh she also made us this one right here now we do have i do have my own ulu over here somewhere and here it is. 
Now, this is something that uh, get you flipped around again. There we go. Now, this is something that my wife went out and purchased. It was, I'm not sure who made this. I thought a family member made this one, but I just, I, I wanted an Ulu. I wanted a real nice, pretty one. I think this one cost her a little over $100. I thought it was handmade from a family member because one of our family members said before we left Nome that they were going to make one. It's incredibly sharp. Now, the only thing I don't like about this one here is the metal they used. Um, it does rust a little bit. So I have to keep it. You can't let this thing soak. If I soak it at all, it's going to rust. Now, this is now like my Akka. She's got a really different looking one. It's got a huge blade, you know, that comes down like this and the handle's a little different. It fits right in the palm of her hand and she uses it for filleting fish. She uses it for everything. I mean, Ulu's are a really nice traditional knife you can find here in, in Alaska. You can, I believe you can find them in the Netherlands and Switzerland and places like that as well, but it's a very versatile tool. And if anybody should visit Alaska, definitely uh, even the inexpensive ones that say they're made in China, still super sharp, still super useful. Uh, they make great gifts. I mean, you can buy them at any of these stores here and you can have them. Most stores will ship them to your house. So when you, when you buy uh, souvenir type stuff, if you're coming to Alaska, just go to the counter and ask them if they have any mail services. Typically you can buy whatever you want. You don't have to pack it home in your luggage. I mean, unless it's something you just want to look at you know, while you're sitting in the hotel room because you're bored. But yeah, and always check the labels. Know where your stuff's coming from. If you're against, you know, buying something that says Alaska that's actually made in China and they're just trying to get your bucks, you know, make sure you're buying authentic stuff if that's what you're looking for. And if you don't care, if you're just buying it for somebody, you know, just because it says Alaska on it, buy the cheap China stuff. They won't know the difference. They won't care either. But you can save a lot of money buying cheap China stuff. Uh, let's see. Yeah, these Ulus are used for everything. Seals, whales, uh, caribou, moose. Uh, they, I watched a native lady fillet up a fish with one of those things, and it was, like, magical. She was just like, <laughs> it was like that ninja slice game, you know, just doing this stuff. It was like, wow, how did she do that? I, I'm not very good at filleting fish myself. I can make a mess of a salmon. Uh Never seen that in Finland. Looks cool. Yeah, Ulu knives are kind of neat. I do I do want to get a better knife uh, for cutting up that big, you know, giant pieces of meat like that. Because I was struggling. I was just using the regular knife block, traditional knives that we tend to buy off of Amazon. I had a hard time holding the knife. It was, you know, being able to safely hold it and not slip is another thing. Also having the right amount of leverage is super important. So I need to get a you know, a bigger type knife for cutting into, you know, those big giant pieces of meat. So I'll have to be checking into that here this summer. Uh, you can get Ulu's on Amazon. You can get Ulu's all over the place on Amazon, on Timu. You can probably buy Ulu's on Wish too. Uh, good sharp knives are safer. Yeah, absolutely. But you can take a crappy knife from, you know, just a crappy run of the mill knife and make it sharp. Uh, let's see. Is my wife is very hot. Yeah, absolutely. Little short native lady. She's got really long brown hair. And uh, yeah, she's been pretty remarkable for a partner. I've been super happy with her uh, as far as wives go, because you know how husbands and wives are. And even even the in-laws are fantastic. I mean, I, I just love them all to death. And that's a rarity. I mean, if you're married to somebody and you actually get along with a family too, that's that's a good deal. You better hold on to that. Uh, let's see, save the leftover brown crackling for snacks and topping. Yeah, I did want to get some fat trimmings. So that big giant piece of meat, I did have some pretty decent uh, fat cap on there. And I, I wanted to try some of that in the air fryer. I want to make those little fat cracklings that people have been talking about. Those sound amazing. But I want to put those in the air fryer and try those out. Uh, is that, is it true Anchorage has homeless problem absolutely i filmed part of that today that'll be in my video coming up in the next day or so uh, a little bit about that i did go through one of the most dangerous neighborhoods what's quote unquote the most dangerous neighborhood in alaska i don't really believe we have the most dangerous neighborhoods of anywhere 
but a lot of that has to do with, uh, you know, they talk about crime rate, petty theft and stuff like that, drugs, uh, domestic abuse and, and stuff like that in that equation. Uh, we do have shootings here on occasion, so uh, it's just that's just a thing. And it's got nothing to do with our gun laws. It's just that people that are do bad things are out to get other people that are doing bad things as a general rule. Am I worried about getting shot? No. You know, unless I'm doing something stupid or I'm getting into somebody's business, that's how you get shot up here in Alaska. Uh, let's see. Nice beer mug. It's not. This one is just, I mean, I guess I've had several beers in this, but I don't particularly drink beer anymore. Mm. How do you authenticate walrus tusks? Um, I don't know how you would authenticate it. It's pretty, for us, it's pretty obvious. I mean, for one... Most people just don't randomly walk around with walrus tusks unless you're Alaska native. So uh, up in Nome, I mean, if, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a walrus in person. I mean, I, I haven't seen one up close, but I have seen dead walrus on the beach in Nome and they were pretty far off. These things are massive. Like, whoa, those things are huge. And uh, yeah, I couldn't imagine trying to, mess around with one of those things they're absolutely giant animals uh let's see anchorage has a high murder rate does it not i, mean, I don't know i mean there's so alaska is one of those places you can make somebody disappear here pretty quickly if you really wanted to i mean there's a lot of places to stuff people in uh, many different ways creative ways that i'm not going to suggest to anybody because somebody would probably take that seriously and try it because it's just i mean we are the last frontier you can be a hundred feet off the road and be in the middle of nowhere. It's just, it's just so weird like that. And yeah, I've gotten lost myself just trying to hike around here. So yeah, it's easy to go, go missing. It's, it's easy for people to do nefarious things, but it's easy for them to do that just about anywhere in the country that I've ever lived. Uh, maybe wonder a bit, uh, opinions on cheat day with carnivore diet, eating cake, snacks, or anything like that. You know, Felix, I, Okay, so when I was doing keto and I was doing fasting and stuff like that, uh, I first started out. Everything's a transition, by the way. It doesn't matter what you're doing. So you got to transition your lifestyle. And I think it, when you're first starting to transition, a cheat day is okay. Um, but with the carnivore diet, cheat days can really flub up stuff you got going on, like benefits. So if you have a cheat day, if I were to have a cheat day, like go on, let's go out to McDonald's and I'll eat some French fries. That would screw me up so bad. Like not like turn everything or reverse everything backwards, but it would actually create physical pain because all the seed oils and all the sugars and all the stuff, um, it would make me cranky. It would make me inflamed. My arthritis might come back. Uh, my edema in my feet, all that stuff can come back. And if once you start, once you get to a certain part in the carnivore diet and you start feeling healthy, you start feeling normal, you start looking back at all the stuff that we did before. And it's just like, I don't want to feel that way anymore. I don't, I'm tired of it. I just don't want to feel unhealthy, you know, perpetual unhealthy for the rest of my life. Uh, let's see. The bear that killed Tim Treadwell was following the carnivore diet. Well, or he could have had something in his backpack that wasn't exactly packed. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's one of those things. Uh, let's see. My cousin Ray Ray uh, went up to Alaska and never came back. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Paul Walker. That that happens a lot up here. Uh, we get tourists that come up here all the time, and they just they vanish. Um, I see, like when I was running the Hall Road years ago, we used to see people ride up the Hall Road, or they're hiking up the Hall Road. I don't know why. There's a lot of wild animals up there um, that cross the Hall Road, and they're right in the general area. They got timber wolves and stuff like that. So we have a lot of just wild animals. And we got wolverines, we got timber wolves, we got regular wolves, we got fox, we got bear, all different kinds of flavors of bear, you know, different colors even. It's just amazing. And those things will get you from time to time. But a lot of times what really happens up here is people go wandering off the path, you know, a, a pretty decent trail. They get off a little ways, they fall down a ravine, and they're just never heard from or seen from again. We also have other uh, underlying situations a person can get into, uh, which is uh, peat bogs. Now, peat bogs is literally just peat sitting on top of water. You can walk across it in most cases, but if you get a soft spot, you can fall through the peat bog. 
and underneath the peak sometimes there's a flowing river or stream so if you go it's just like falling through the ice you fall through you know six seven inches of peak you get down under it'll shut like a trap door nobody knows where you went i mean it's it's horrible but it, it's true i've fallen through peat bogs before uh, on a dirt bike and it was so incredibly hard to get off and while i was rolling around on the ground because you know when you're on a dirt bike you fall through and the whole back end of the bike goes down so my legs were sticking straight out in front of me on the peat bog and my handlebars were crossing the front of my legs so i had to try to figure out how to get out from that and then when i looked around in the hole i could see down it looked like about 30 40 feet and i could see all the way down it was crystal clear down there and uh yeah if you fall through that and you get up underneath there you get tangled up in roots and yeah that's that's a horrible way to go uh let's see yeah we do pray for you ray ray that's a horrible story you got there now uh, let's see how often do you get cheat day cravings i really don't anymore um so one of my problems when i was transitioning into into more strict type carnivore was this i got this fruit basket over here it's, it's got no fruit in it now but see i'm a binge eater so if i were to get into the fruit basket i would like eat like four or five maybe six bananas at a time or like two to three apples or you know three to four oranges at a time now that was screwing stuff up that that goes back to a, a carb and sugar type craving and once you get that under control and it's kind of natural from what other carnivores have been telling me is that once you get the uh, traditional sugars and carbs out of your system you start craving other things so it's not necessarily you're going to start craving old snacks or little Debbie snack cakes or cookies. Uh, you're going to start craving more healthy items. And I kind of justified it a little bit for a period of time that I was eating fruits. But I had problems with my gut health because I was adding in all the fruits. Like I said, I'm a binge eater. So my problems might not be your problems. But I didn't like the way the fruit was making my poop turn out. Uh, I was having some issues there. I mean, so many issues that I was actually contacting other carnivores and talking to them. Uh, I reached out to my doctor to ask them some questions about what was going on because it was only when I was eating fruit. So once I start, stopped eating the fruit, all those problems went away within two to three days. So, I mean, it's really up to you what you want to try. But, you know, just, just trying to validate certain cheat days tends to go away over time uh, the further you transition into it. How often do you get a cheat day? All right, we talked about that. Donna says, I no longer have any uh, need for cheat days. I have no cravings for what I call junk food. Have you, that's another, I haven't really had any cravings for junk food. Once in a while, I'll eat something off carnivore, but it's it's so very rare now. And, it, and it's easy to control myself, you know, because I might be like, yeah, I'll give me a bite of that. That won't hurt anything. You know, a handful of nuts or something like that. Not a big deal, but. It's when you just sit there and eat a whole can of freaking cashews. That's a problem. I mean, that'll that'll throw you off a little bit, and it'll it'll create other underlying issues that you didn't expect. Uh, have you ever been to what used to be called Barrow? Uh, no, I've never been to Barrow. I do have a lot of friends, uh, possibly some family that lives up in Barrow, but no, I have not been there. Uh, what do you think about oil oil drilling in Alaska? I think they need to drill more. They they actually cap the wells off. Now, I have worked for the oil companies up here. I did work for them up on the North Slope. And while we were up there, uh, that was when the oil prices dropped. And all they do up there, they're not pumping more oil when the oil prices drop. They literally cap it off until the price comes back up. And then they'll let it flow down the line again. Uh, we had a uh, governor, Sarah Palin. She put in this weird, uh, this weird act for the oil company. And it probably had something to do with the reason why she left office early. And she decided to uh, decline her governorship here in the state. But what that did is it allowed the oil companies a minimum that they could flow down the pipeline. So if the oil prices drop, they're only required to, you know, maybe put a trickle down the pipeline and have that amount of oil coming down. So it's just, I mean, you, you can't win. Uh, you know, Republican, Democrat, I don't care who you are. It's just, it doesn't work doesn't work well up here when you're trying to negotiate that stuff. Uh, but yeah, they can totally drill a whole lot more. There's, there's so much oil up here in the state of Alaska. It's just ridiculous. We're, we're nowhere near tapping out the, the amount of oil that we can produce. I think, I think really if Alaska was allowed to, uh, we could produce enough oil to supply the entire world if we wanted to. Uh, let's see. What do you think? Da, 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 da. Felix Calf, have you 
uh, tried our or sick whale meat unicorn whale I have to remember what it's called in English uh, muck tuck we call it muck tuck here pretty sure I have some uh, oh that's a bag of bones that's a waffle so now this was sent to my son this stuff keeps like forever so yeah this is muck tuck here this is frozen muck tuck uh usually what we do we can we just let it thaw out it might rinse off a little bit of that freezer frost you know no big deal but it now gray whale and beluga taste totally different by the way so beluga to me tastes like it's a little bit more gravelly and i'm gonna cut off a piece of this here let me find a plate we can do this because we are live on YouTube. Let me find a little plate. I'm gonna cut off a piece of this and we're gonna put the rest of it away. There we go. Got our muck duck on a plate. And I need to find another clean knife. Cause I don't wanna let that sit out for too long. Oh, uh, what do we got here? Not that one, that's not a knife. That's too big. Uh, my good knife is in the sink, the one that I would normally use. Oh, this will work just fine. Okay. But yeah, muck tuck is actually really healthy. Now the natives, they eat a ton of protein all the time. That's why I call them like the, uh, you know, they're like the original carnivores. And they've been eating this way for like forever. So we're going to see if I can actually cut into this because this is frozen. I could have probably used the ulu, huh? Hindsight. Now trying to cut through the actual skin itself is like near impossible. I can't get through that with this knife. I would have to let this thaw out for a lot longer. We're gonna have to abandon ship on that. But anyways, this is what muck tuck looks like. This was sent down from Nome, Alaska from one of the hunts they had. And our relatives once in a while they send us uh you know little native treats native food and stuff like that now uh alaska blueberries you know from up there in nome taste so much better than the blueberries down here they are amazing i was absolutely just amazed at the amount of berries that are up there in nome in the first place there are just so many berries up there you could live off of just the berries that are on the tundra uh, put you back now it's not just the blueberries it's uh, we got low-lying cranberries. We got uh, all kinds of different berries up here. Um, salmon berries. Those are absolutely amazing and delicious. Uh, it's just, and even on the carnivore diet, one thing that I won't worry about is uh, is blueberries. I mean, if I want to eat some blueberries, I might have some blueberries. Um, strawberries can kind of throw me into a other type sugar craving, so I stay away from those. Uh, let's see. Or sick means fat in Greenlandic. Oh, that's interesting. But yeah, up here we call it muck tuck. Um, it's pretty much just, uh, you know, muck tuck is universal just for whale. And let's see, Roy Beatty. Uh, John, what is the very first step to want to change your life? I always have enough energy to work. And when I get home, I eat junk and sit in front of the TV. Now I'm 70 pounds over <laughs> nearing 50 well you're right you're in a in a crappy situation there i'm sorry you got there um the most important thing to do if you're going to come home is to eat as much protein as possible i mean if you want to prevent those sugar cravings you know just eat a lot of steak i started out with 80 20 burger patties frozen patties and i was eating about four of those per meal so i'd eat anywhere from a pound to two pounds of uh you know either burger patties or hamburger meat um, throw in some extra protein with eggs, uh, throw in some butter, season it however you want, you know, put some garlic in there, uh, onion powder, salt, pepper. Um, I do notice now, you know, Todd at Carnivore Cure talked about how pepper was making him feel a specific way. So he avoids black pepper. And I wanted to try to keep that out of my diet for a period of time and see, see if that was something that might have been creating some other digestive issues for me. So I'm avoiding... Uh, black pepper for a period of time and uh, I'm also when I'm fasting I'm also going to try to avoid coffee 
But yeah, definitely try to eat more protein. It doesn't matter what type of diet you're on. If you're doing a vegetable type diet or meat based diet, um, you know, focus on fats, natural fats and proteins on either end of the spectrum. However you choose, it'll be helpful. It'll keep you, it'll give you that uh, sensation of being full and you can actually start to recognize it over a period of time because for the most part, when we start digging into the carbs, we don't know when to stop. We don't know when to stop eating a cookie. You eat a cookie. You want to eat two more cookies, and then, then you want to eat something else. You know, maybe have a bag of popcorn, and then after the bag of popcorn, you want something else and some ice cream. It's just, and once we start getting into the sugars and junk, we just don't know when to stop it. It just keeps going and going. Uh, if I send you good steaks, would you send me some good blueberries? That's kind of hard to do. I wish I could do that. Uh, blueberries don't ship well. I mean, it's easy to ship meat. I mean, but shipping fruit is, is kind of hard unless you can get it flash frozen before you ship it. Uh, let's see, to get started on weight loss, uh, know your why. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to, it's not just about losing weight. It's not just about losing a specific number. Um, it's about changing your entire life because, yeah, I can lose, I can lose 50 pounds. But if I don't know why I lost that 50 pounds... And I don't know how to prevent going back the other way. It's just a series of, it's, it's like a diet. Diets have an ending. So, you know, sometimes just, because when I started off, I had to start actually changing my vocabulary from diet to lifestyle for a long time. I mean, I do say carnivore diet quite a bit or ketogenic diet, but still it's a, it's a lifestyle change uh, that we have to change up here. If we don't fix what's going on up here, no amount of weight loss is going to fix the weight loss or why the weight loss is happening. If you don't know how we're losing the weight, how it works, you know, we're just randomly losing weight and we're going to just as easily randomly put it back on. And it's horribly frustrating. I've done it for so many years. I mean, I can teach anybody out there how to become 435 pounds. I am an expert at becoming fat. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lee Haley, do you hurt? Do you hunt in Alaska? Uh, do you have to be a resident to hunt? Um, we do have non-resident hunting licenses available. It's extremely expensive. Um, and even for local uh, residents, people that live here, uh, you have to abide by a lot of specific rules. You break those rules, you lose your hunting rights for life at times. Now, there's a lot of land up here that is privately owned, so it's not like you can just willy-nilly run around and hunt in certain areas. So you got to, you know, check all the local regulations, you know, what areas are open for hunting. It gets pretty technical, you know, especially when you want to just think you can go out in the middle of nowhere and go hunting. Because sometimes even these local guides, they'll drop you off in an area that you're not supposed to be in. And if you get caught hunting out there, you get in a lot of trouble. You get a huge fine. You could go to jail. Um, yeah, could be a lot of issues. So definitely know your rules. And, well, that looks like about it for that. Okay, guys. I need to get busy uh, working on this uh, video for... You know, the most one of the most dangerous neighborhoods here in Anchorage. I don't know how that video is going to come out. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It was done on an Insta360 camera. I hope it turns out pretty good. I uh, just, you know, just trying to share, you know, what the local areas look like and stuff around this time of year, around April. Um, nothing too overly dramatic, but hopefully I can make it interesting. But all right, guys, you know, I want to say God bless. If you're trying to lose weight, yeah, by all means, subscribe to the channel. We can discuss this stuff later. I have no problem hitting the live stream button and just doing random nonsense like watch me screw something up in the kitchen because it's just fun you want to make fun of my bald head go ahead i don't care i mean i i got over that fear a long time ago when i got on youtube or else i wouldn't be doing a live stream by the way because it's incredibly difficult to sit here and talk for uh, an hour and 43 minutes and not completely bore everybody in the room but there's also some other carnivore live streams going on right at the moment i'm going to dive in on those uh, I'm not going to be a guest in there, but I'm definitely going to check out the chats and uh, give them some local support. Uh, Carnivore Cure is one of those. Uh, Michael, uh, Limitless Lindy, they typically have their live stream going on. It's probably going on right about now. I hope it's not over. But, all right, I'm definitely going to go give them a look-see and see what they got going on. And there's also a lot of other Carnivore live streams going on on Saturday and Sunday as well. So definitely go you know, check out the community. We're all out here to help one another. And we're just literally out here sharing our adventures and the benefits of what's actually happening because we're all learning this as we go. And it's just been an amazing journey. And I want you all to take care and God bless. Bye-bye.